Welcome everyone to That Kind of Nerd's coverage of Game of Thrones. I am CJ Mellon, joined of course by Josh Burns and Brian Thornton. Jadakaris! <laughs> We're going to be talking about Season 7, Episode 4. This is obviously your spoiler warning, so if you haven't watched the episode, what's wrong with you? It leaked online earlier. You should have watched this like twice before it aired. Brian just set the whole episode on fire. <laughs> So let's start with uh, a couple of the reunions and the uh, just the wonderful scenes that happened at nope. Winterfell. Nope. nope. There were no reunions? Start at King's Landing because we were only there for five minutes. What do we do in King's Landing? Uh, in, well, I think what's interesting is that in King's Landing, Cersei meets with uh, Mycroft Holmes there. And <laughs> <laughs> they of the talk, Iron Bank, yes. They, they talk for a few minutes, and, and Cersei is at this point – She's assuming I already have the gold to pay my debts. You're paid off in full, right? You're good. We're mint. And we've won the war. Nothing We're money, baby. Nothing to worry about. We're 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 bank. Um uh you know, at this point I have no use for you. And now Mycroft Holmes is like, "Well, there must be things that you want to finance." And she's like, right. "Well, there might be some things down the road. I don't really need you." It's like when when you pay off your credit card, your company's like, "Hey, we'll raise your credit limit and right. you can buy a whole bunch of other stuff." Right. And you're just like, right. "Yeah, and, no, and I you're it took seeing, me a long time to get out of this debt." So, I'll, like you're I'll seeing you the know? scumbaggery happening <laughs> and you're going oh, something is not going to go the way you want it to go. Something, I'm not sure what yet. Right, more to come later. Something is not going to go the way you want it to go. I, I will say this though: when you're looking at Cersei as a ruler, um, if in episode like I think seven of of the first season, you've got everyone down in King's Landing saying, "Man, we all owe money to the Iron Bank. We are in some serious debt. The Lannisters have to pay you up. This is, I mean, we're never going to pay this off." And here's Cersei going, "Hey, we we paid it all off. You're welcome. Hey, check, right, well, here's the we check. we paid uh, we killed the Tyrell house and stole all the gold in Highgarden. Yeah, so like you gotta be like the, so people in Highgarden hate her, but at the same time, like she's she, listen, she's balancing the what budget. People at Highgarden, there are no more people; they're That's all dead, true. and and the ones that are left are going to be slaves. And it's, a lot of people in King's Landing, you know, obviously uh, are dead, and uh, you know don't like her as well. Right. But she murdered all of Flea Bottom and the Sept of Baylor, so it's really just the Highborn <laughs> that are left. Right, and it's listen, all her people to begin with. Balance budget, the art program is is flourishing. They, they just painted a whole atlas on the floor. I mean, what more could yes, you ask entire, for? Yes, all of the liberal arts in King's Landing. Perfectly fine. Perfectly the, fine. I'm sure those those actors are still floating around. <laughs> the first things that get slashed are not being slashed. Everybody's happy. <laughs> Theater is booming. <laughs> <laughs> There's still field hockey happening. Everything's fine. Anyway. So, yeah, I mean, you're right. Not a whole lot happened in King's Landing, but at the same time, hey, you know, we got to see more Minecraft homes. No, but in, in retrospect, right, we were in King's Landing for just a few minutes, and she was like, she could not have been more fucking smug, right? So what we're going to talk about later gave me so much satisfaction that I can't wait to see her throw like a total temper tantrum next episode. Because that's what's coming. Is, is, is oh, l- literally heads are going to roll. Cersei's temper tantrum is coming. I cannot wait to see it because she's going to be such a baby back bitch about this. Could you imagine? I mean, what Joffrey's just like, I'm bored on a Wednesday looked like, which involves shooting, you know, prostitutes with with crossbows. <laughs> I can only imagine what Cersei's temper tantrum is going to be when she's like, oh, I just I really. OK, this is great. Yep. Going to be right, poking fantastic. babies with hot sticks or something <laughs> like fire. You know what I mean? It's, just, it's gonna be ugly, but that's that was we were only there for a minute, and we're gonna revisit why she's so pissed off. But I, I think we should probably talk about Winterfell, yeah, because that's what made me super happy. So there's <laughs> okay. What made you super happy about the events going down in Winterfell? Everything with Arya, Arya forever and Arya, <laughs> Arya, 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 Arya. She's all awesome. day long. Love her, Arya. Like her, her coming back and taking control at the gate, right? Look, I'm I'm getting in one way or the other. Like, I guess you can tell her you turn me away, but when I turn out to be who I say I am, that's going to be a problem for you, right? Someone said the, there's a great analogy. Those two guards are like people who just started watching Game of Thrones and haven't seen the previous seasons. <laughs> oh, 
oh, you know, Macer. No, that Macer's. I don't know who that guy is. There's, there's this Macer here now. Oh, what about this person? Yeah, no, that person's dead. We've never heard of a Roderick. <laughs> yeah, like what, what? What are you talking about? They're new people who just started watching Game of Thrones and had to guard the gate to Winterfell. So good, so good. And then my my absolute favorite part of the episode was Arya going to Brienne and saying, "I haven't trained for a while." Like. Right. Can we can can I train with you? Well, you can't use that. Well, uh, look, I promise I won't cut you. And and Brienne's like, "What? We cut me? I'm using a long sword. You're using a little twig. Like what? What's gonna happen?" And then she hands Brienne her ass for the first time in this show. Like yep. we've never seen Brienne lose like that. And Maybe she to lost a bear. That's about it. She lost handily and 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 often in that in that training <laughs> session with like with Arya oh, and sorry with Sansa standing above watching going oh, that's not my little sister at all is it I liked that I liked that fact that it really was a way for Arya to show Sansa listen because they didn't talk about their journey right I didn't Everyone like wanted that them at to, like, all rehash everything oh, I thought it was a great way for Arya to say listen I'm not your little sister no uh, you're right and and from a from a striking out on your own it is they the only the only conversation they had was that kind of and it was like uh it was put into a meme, right? It was like, or like somebody tweeted about it. Like, how's your life been? Shit. How's yours been? Shit. In other news, brand's fucking crazy now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's there's, true, so there's, we got that going for us. But like, I don't know, man. Like, don't, don't you think that that, that scene and, and Sansa sort of walk is almost storming off in the same way that she used to when she was a little girl where like Arya doesn't have to conform to all the social conventions and can do what she wants and can be who she wants to be. Don't you think that drives a wedge between them? I think it, I think it, it's a stark reminder. No pun intended. Oh, uh, I see what you did no there. Pun intended. A stark of the, reminder. Of the the Ned Stark reminder. Sansa still is alone, right? That, that she still very has much to alone. Yes. Bear this world by herself. And even though her brother's back, he's not, Bran at all. No, he's a weird ass. Even though Arya's back, you know, she's she's changed drastically. Uh, John's away, and all her uh, rest of her family is dead, and, and she's still just stuck with Littlefinger. Right. And and it's that sad realization that you're just like, hey, I'm surrounded by everyone I wanted to see, and I've never been so alone. And it's it's a kind of a sad thing. Brian, what do you think about that that relationship? What, what do you think about what's going on with them? No, I, I loved this episode, and I loved everything with Arya. Um, I... I I think Sansa's a little a tad bit jealous. I don't see that uh, reading, read that as, all right, let's say, I don't read that as, uh, you know, that she's, you know, super lonely or anything. I just read that as, you know, everybody got kind of like, it's a shitty situation, but everybody kind of got what they wanted in the end. Like right. Arya right. wanted to be, didn't want to like be in social conforms. She didn't, she didn't want to be a lady and she wanted to be a fighter and she is. Um, you know, Bran always wanted to be more than what he was, and you know, yep. and John is now, you know, not really a bastard. Ha- Everybody's kind of taking him in. Well, but but Sansa, but wanted to Sansa, be the lady of a house. Right. She wanted to be a queen, and she was. But that's my Surprise. but that's my point. Now Sansa has what she wants, and she's not happy about it. But I, but I, I disagree because Bran didn't want to be the guy stuck in the wheelchair as a three-eyed raven. He wanted to be a warrior. Uh, he wanted to fly. No, he, he always to fly. wanted to fly. <sighs> Yeah. So I, I get I what Brian's saying at, at, okay. at the right, very right, right, least right. metaphorically, I get it. But CJ, I don't disagree with your perspective. I do think that Sansa is alone in the world. I do think that when she saw John, she was hoping for a reunion, even though she treated him like shit, right? She right. was hoping for a reunion, and he turned out to be a better ruler than she. When she saw Bran, she was hoping for her little brother, and she got the three-eyed raven. And when she saw Arya, she was hoping for a little sister, and she got a dancing master. So we've she's got problems in that she is alone. She's as alone as she's always been, and we're going to see which way she turns. There, there, there were two other things in the, the Winterfell scene uh, surrounding just the, the kids and we'll, we'll get to whole little finger and, and, and uh, Brandon in a minute. There's uh, the moment where they are doing 
um, the the fight, right? When Arya is is challenging uh, Brianna Tarth. Can we just can we just talk about the fact that Arya is like smiling the entire time? Oh, yeah, so, so I think that's it. So that. she's walking through Winterfell, and this is the first time she's been back since they left and went to King's Landing. This is the first time she's been back, and she is just remembering all the times with her family. She's remembering all the the people that used to live there, and she's just walking through it. It's like going to your high school after you haven't been there in a long she time, what, and just kind of remembering 10, right? everything. She was ten when they left. Something I like believe that? so. Yeah, mm-hmm. like 10, 11 years old, and and now she's essentially a woman. Um, but not only that, she's also no one, which is interesting. And she, she was sort of just she knew exactly what she was going to do the whole time. There was no hesitation. There was no lack of confidence, and it was in every scene. I mean, she is. She feels at home. This is her place. And it was never more apparent than in that battle with Brienne where, I mean, Brienne didn't even get close. Like, she didn't even sniff a wound. There was no striking happening. And right, Arya yeah, no, was absolutely. brilliant. And you just, you well, got to wonder. She like, did she, like, knock her down and she did the whole, like, Eddie Gordo from Tekken right, you know, she, rebound? Right, yeah, she mashed all the buttons at once and did, like, a, a, crazy, uh, a crazy flip up again. It was just, you know, I... I was thrilled with the battle. I thought it was a, a fantastic one-on-one. I hate to be so now. I get to be the guy since Craig isn't here to throw out oh, your crazy the conspiracy right, theories the and, and all your wild cards. Uh, there's a, a moment here that is everyone's alleging is a, a tip of the hat and really going no further. That during the battle between uh, Brienne and Arya, in the background when they're first just talking to each other, uh, when you cut to Brienne, there's a woman wearing a blue. Uh, long dress and has red hair, just bright red hair, walking in the background. And people are saying, hey, maybe that's a, finally a nod to Delaney Stoneheart, uh, which is, uh, if you haven't been paying attention, is the, the death of Catelyn, is Catelyn Stark uh, coming back. And people are just saying, maybe it's just them acknowledging that this character is in the books and not in the show, and they just are just saying, hey, what's up? So I don't, I don't, hate, your th- I don't hate your theory. Um, I don't hate hearing it. However... Lady Stoneheart never made it back to Winterfell. She was she essentially led the um, mm-hmm. Brothers Without Banners in the right. books, and and, so, and I, I think they're just saying, "Hey, we acknowledge that this is the thing. We're not going to do it in this show, but if we're going to just you know tip of the hat Easter egg, it's like the Pixar ball and the lamping in the Pixar movies. It's not actually part of the movie. It's just." If you're a fan, you're going, hey, I know that's a Luxo lamp. You know, it's I just one know. of those things. Uh, Brian, thoughts there? I know nothing about the books. I didn't see that lady in the screen because I was too busy talk, looking at Arya be a badass. Well, I well, I will do this. I will include a, a link to an article and some some videos in, in the show notes. So you can go ahead and see that and just see see for yourself. See what you guys think, you know, actually happened there. If it's just a background worker who happens to have red hair uh, or if it's a maybe it's the lighting lamp. person. Don't get in my fucking <laughs> shot, all right? You just you just sitting here going la di da di da. All right, all right. So what do we what do we think? What do we think? I'm curious to hear what you guys think about the interaction between Littlefinger and Bran. Jesus, I is this loaded it. or what? It really was loaded because this this is this is his attempt to under. So it, it, just like he said, when there's po- a power vacuum, someone obviously has to to take the place, and this is his strategy to maybe say, "I'll totally get Jon Snow dead." Uh, he's this, not. This- he's not for anyone. He's not against anyone, or he's for everyone and against everyone, and that's what he's going to do. So he's tr- he's propositioning Bran as if Bran is still Brandon Stark, right? So the, the thing about this conversation is, this is the first time outside of. Ned Stark, we really see Littlefinger sort of misjudge his his target, right? He he really misjudged his prey, so to speak. And he thought he was going to be able to spin Bran into the Lord of Winterfell sort of thing. And and Bran is like, well, but, but I'm the three-eyed raven, right? And, and the, the thing with the dagger and the, the, you know, do you know who this belongs to? Clearly it was his, and it belonged to the guy who came to kill him, and it's interesting, blah, blah, blah. That's all fine. But none of this phases Littlefinger. He starts talking about all this chaos, and Bran says chaos is a ladder, and you almost see Littlefinger vomit. <laughs> just just a little bit. A little bit, and just in holds, his mouth. Holds it in his mouth. Yep, 
and and because he said Littlefinger said that to Varys in what, what Brian season three season three yeah right which is one of those like they were meeting in the Red Keep secretly if yeah, I, if I recall wonder- if I recall the scene they were they were together. And and Varys is telling him, "Oh, this is all chaos." And 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 Littlefinger says, "Well, chaos is a ladder. We climb the ladder." Well, here I'll I'll give you the exact quote. So it's from season. It's from uh, an episode in season three called "The Climb." Varys is is talking about chaos, and he says, uh, "Chaos is a pit." To which Littlefinger responds, "Chaos isn't a pit. Chaos is a ladder. Many who try to climb it fall. Uh, I'm sorry, fail and never get to try again." The fall breaks them, and some are given a chance to climb, but they refuse. They cling to the realm or the gods or love illusions. Only the latter is real. The climb is all there is. Which, pretty much saying, you know, little finger, it's that I'm in it for me mentality. I'm going to use all this freaking chaos and craziness to get what's mine and get get to the top of this ladder. But Bran could never have known that. Like, Rand wouldn't have known that conversation because it was one of their little secret meetings. The, the the craziest thing I think I saw online, not craziest, but the one of the more humorous things I saw online was uh, like a, a parallel to, you know, Littlefinger realizes that Bran can see his browser history. <laughs> yes, I saw that as well. <laughs> and that, that was, but that's that's kind of what it exactly was. What it is. How yep, does yep. this kid know? It's like you read your text and you're just like, how the hell did you? What I said to this other dude a bunch of years ago, and that's kind of crazy. So this whole the the whole scene that played out in Winterfell, there's Man, there's a lot of stuff hinging on. Like, I don't know where Sansa is going to go. I feel confident in everything Arya does all the time because she's just awesome. Right. I, I will <laughs> say this though: there was one thing that was a uh, just a glimmer of hope, and maybe George R. R. Martin just decided, hey, I don't feel like killing anybody today. Was uh, when Mira said goodbye to Bran, and she came into the room right after the the little finger exchange, and she's obviously just kind of waiting for him to be like, no, don't go, I love you, and he's all just like, yeah, I remember what it was like to be Brandon Stark, but. I remember so much else now. So, okay, bye. Like, cold, robotic, just well, her and Well, jo- her and Jorah are going to get to hang out in Palkatraz together. <laughs> what? Did you say Palkatraz? I said Palkatraz. Is that like the friend zone forever? It is the friend zone forever, yes. Palkatraz. I'm going to remember that. <laughs> That's good stuff. I, I, I don't have... Look, I don't think Winterfell could have been done any better. Yeah. Right. And and even though it sort of developed slowly, th- guys, this entire episode was This was like, the shortest episode of Game of Thrones, by the way. I know, but it was like the it whole feel thing was like heart pounding, right? Yeah. Every, every it seems like every scene had this excitement to it. And I think probably, you know, or at least for me, maybe sort of the most subdued stuff was Dragonstone. Like yeah, I love that it's it's the it's the uh, the 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 torchlit tour of a cave and and an art show at the end of the deal, uh, and and having that meeting between Danny and and John, I thought that was interesting. Right, well. like okay, so look, here's pictures of the first men, and and here's pictures of the White Walkers, and that proves that I know what I'm talking about. And 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 I'm kind of like going, didn't like Danny? Isn't Danny thinking, bitch? I left you down here for three days. You could have put that shit there. <laughs> No, I don't. John's just scrambling to hide the chalk. Right. No, I have a certificate of authenticity. I don't know what you're talking about. It's right, right, right. here. This is when I when I saw it on eBay, it had a picture of the certificate, and clearly, <laughs> I didn't do it. It was I, the, it was that, the first men. That was but, that was definitely not my thought. I mean, she did buy it hook, line, singer, no questions asked. It, and she did, but this was the this was the only part of the show that I kind of went, mm, that's hokey. Think like you guys are missing the point of that scene. Are you mean that they're attracted to each other? No. What's the no. point? Well, they are attracted to each other. In case anyone was wondering. So here, here's what I've got via reading stuff and talking to people. You remember back in like season, I don't know, four or five, where uh, John is out in, in in the wilderness and he first finds the, the wildlings and he meets the the uh, leader of the wildlings, the king of the wildlings, Mance Raider, Mance Raider, Mance Raider, and they're they're trying to you know. He's trying to convince him to join up and join with Castle Black and everything. He says the exact words that Danny says to John in that cave about bending the knee. Says uh, to the, to the effect of, um, 
your people will follow you no matter what is it really worth their lives uh, for your pride isn't that what john said to mance that's exactly what john said to mance and now danny is saying it to john because john refuses to bend the knee to danny right she said bend the knee and he said suck the knee right but that's my point. That that was the point of that scene is that, you know, John's kind of going full circle and being very hypocritical. He burned Mance at the stake for not. No, no, he did. He that. shot him through the heart to for mercy. I get that. But he sentenced him. He sentenced but him to that, though. He sentenced him to death. He sentenced him to death for this exact same thing. And now he's trying. He's on the other end of things and he won't he won't let he won't swallow his pride for the greater good now either. You don't see irony in that. Uh, I, I, I appreciate. I appreciate what you're. What you're. What you're getting at. I did not pick up on that at all. So I, I mean, like it, it, it. It's the first time I'm hearing it. So I, the no, impact I, isn't this huge. I get it. I do. Um, I don't agree. Even though the language is the same, I don't agree with uh, with the meaning of it. And I don't think that John should read any. Even though the words may ring out, like she may as well say, you know, nothing, Jon Snow. And I, I just don't think it's going to mean the same thing. I'm just saying it, it's it's a it's a similar situation. But now he's on the other side of the. the it's but equation. it's not because his cause is more righteous. Like and as it was before. Right. He needed. You don't he, think Mance's cause was righteous at all? I think that. Ultimately. John got done what needed to be done, which is uniting the people. Mance wanted that. I get it. But he wanted it a different way, right? He wanted these people free, not, and, and, you know, just whatever, just tear down the wall type free. Um, John wasn't about that. He was about, we need to join forces. And, and Mance was, well, wild things will not be ruled. Well, false. They're all following John right now, like as we speak. So clearly they will be ruled. If they have a reason to follow. And I just think that no matter what Danny says, John believes he's the one they should be following. Yeah, but that's the same thing with the people in the North, though. They're going to follow John's lead no matter what. If John decides to bend the knee to Danny, they they will be pissed about it, but they will be okay with it eventually. But it's the wrong... Is not you think it's the wrong move? Like, at this point, she is not the one that... Like, her war is not the most important war. Not right now. I agree. I agree. But also, I mean, she said she would help him if he would just bend the knee. So you're just saying, hey, listen, it's a small point. Just concede it and then go fight your bigger, bigger war and stop being a goddamn hypocrite. I I, th- I, I think, listen, when we started this, series, you're, you're saying that bending the knee is like mining dragon glass and it's not a small thing. That, I'm not saying it's a small that thing. That was a small thing. But I'm saying, for, I mean, listen, for the greater good. It's a small thing. And I, I'm, I'm saying that at the beginning of the show, there was no King of the North. That started with Rob Stark. Why would the North be any pissed off that if we decided to just go back to having a warden in the North? Because it worked peop- out just fine before. Because most of the people who knew that are dead. Right. I mean. And, and the wildlings don't want to ever serve a Southern ruler. That that's actually the sticking point. Isn't necessarily the families of the North. It's the wildlings. It's it's the tens of thousands of people that have come over. They they trust Northerners a little bit. They trust Southerners not not, not at all. No, oh, I'm sure Captain Redbeard will figure it out. Tormund Giants Bane. Yeah, that's guy. That guy, Captain Redbeard, is not after a, he, not after he gets with Brienne, he'll be okay with leading. Uh, with a southern ruler whatever who cares i'm just saying there's a lot of callbacks to previous seasons in this episode i don't think it's by mistake so then let's focus a little bit more on on the other part of the relationship between danny and john danny is tearing into Tyrion about his strategies even questioning his loyalty and then she turns to john and asks and asks him what she should do And just like he's a trusted advisor after they kind of had this repartee and again, not bending the knee, uh, you know, I feel that Tyrion's not in in any kind of jeopardy with Danny. But I just thought it was an odd choice that Danny would now turn to to John and ask, you know, what should I do? What what options do I have to to him? I thought it was just a very odd choice, but it's it's kind of speaking a little bit to the relationship that they're building. What do you guys think about that moment? She's starting to respect John. And And she's also down like three generals. So, right. (laughs) 
Right. She needs a little bit of extra extra opinions. And then I like the fact they said if you use your dragons to melt castles and bird cities, uh, you're no different. You're just more of the same. And that's basically not what the people who chose to follow you wanted. They didn't want more of the same. Uh, and and I think it kind of inspires her that, all right, you know, things need to be done a little differently. But just because we have this dragon doesn't mean we got to put it in a cage. Let's let's go use this. And I think John really is responsible for some of the action that happens later on in the uh, in the episode. Yeah, I agree. John is responsible for the action in my pants <laughs> over that entire episode. <laughs> God. Been waiting seven and a half years for that moment. It's totally worth it. So uh, on the way to King's Landing, we got Jamie, we've got Braun, we've got... <laughs> I can't even say Dickon without... Uh, Rickon? Dickon. <laughs> Did you see the Funniest meme that has a picture? I've ever seen. Had the picture, uh, there's a meme that had a picture of uh, Dickon on the left. And then it said, I had a picture of uh, Theon. That's a dick off. Oh. <laughs> we actually, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We totally missed that. Yeah. The moment where Theon, Theon lands on the beach at Dragonstone. The poor man's going on like a, an abuse tour, like an apology tour. And he's just and getting he's greeted by John. And I'm going, oh, my God. He's going to fucking kill him. My wife turns to me and she goes, oh, John's going to kill him. Like, he has no sword. And she goes, you think that's going to stop him? Nope. I was like, no, that's a good point. Right. And and I, I thought the meeting went very well. I thought it, it went as, as well as it could possibly go for Theon. Uh, and I felt really good about how John handled it in the end. This was a, a really well done scene by the writers because it wasn't a scene you really needed, but it was good to have it. And I'm glad we had it. Is anyone feeling sorry? See, I thought that, that Theon would have this whole arc of redemption and he would uh actually kind of get his life back on track and i don't think that's possible for him anymore i think literally his you need to atone before you can be redeemed i yeah i I don't think he's ever gonna do that i think theon is just no that's this stuck in this fate what's happening he's this is his life he's going to keep living right and and being faithful to the right people until they forgive him or he dies at which point they'll forgive him He's going to sacrifice himself to save somebody. Mm, I'm going to be kind of lame. Mm, yeah, really no, I, I agree. Pre- maybe his sister. Maybe Probably Sansa. Probably save his sister. Yeah. Right? Maybe John. Maybe sister. But, but somebody. Don't... Like, that would, not, that would not make me a happy person. I would. I, I don't, I don't well, the like... writers don't give a shit what makes you happy. That's <laughs> The writers don't give a shit what makes anybody happy. Except for the one scene that we should actually talk about now. So let's talk about, we finally have this, this battle at the Reach we get Dothraki, we get dragons, we get someone loading a crossbow way too quickly, in my opinion. Uh, we get over 20 burning people on screen at the exact same time. By the way, just so you know, this is the most this is the most amount of people on fire for a television show in one scene ever. Where are you getting these statistics? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's thanks to the folks over at uh, Entertainment Weekly. But it is. This honestly is the, the most amount of people on fire for a television show ever. Basically. Listen, listen, the, the Rick on Dick on thing. Hilarious. Actually, like b- both Laura and I laughed out loud, Ch- like a <laughs> hearty chuckle because that was really well done and like expertly delivered masterfully, whatever the word is, expertly delivered, masterfully delivered. Flugel, 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 yeah, horrifically delivered. By Braun. That's so thing. good. My, uh, I have a friend. He he loves Braun so much. I was talking to him about the show. He's like, I love that character. I get so nervous whenever he shows up on screen anymore because <laughs> he's like, I'm thinking this could be the last time I could see him. Because I'm like, they haven't done anything really special with Braun for like two years. Like, die. He's, no, he's going to die. Yeah. He's due to die. And like, I'm watching this entire episode. I'm thinking of my friend. I'm like, oh, my God, they're going to do it. Holy shit, he's going to die. The entire time that Dothraki guy is chasing him, I'm like, oh, no, he's going to be so sad. I'm going to have to call him and console him. <laughs> and So th- this scene was incredible for so many reasons, right? Not only, yay, do we finally get the, the dragon, which we're definitely going to talk about. but No, we've that's got, the only reason why it was incredible. We've got Tyrion watching this battle scene from afar, right? And we see him having these mixed emotions of, you know, hey, we got to win this battle. We have to kill all these people. But at the same time, rooting for his brother, you know, don't do it, you fool, or don't do it, you idiot, or whatever he calls him. We see him just kind of anguishing over the fact that he is winning. He's very conflicted. Uh, And we see Jamie just throwing 
caution to the to the wind. And I mean, I really thought we you were going to get. Jamie f- wants to die. I, I I think Jamie wants to die. I think Jamie so. wants to die. As a matter of fact, Jamie is in no way holding anything back at this point. The I was going to say, after, just going at it. He's Riggs. You know, he's, he really he's, is. He's right. But that's but that's what Riggs has a death wish. You, I think you think yeah. Jamie has a death. wish. I, absolutely. I do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He's got well, he's got nothing to live for. And he really don't freaking and more run towards the mother of dragons with a spear with her dragon right next to her and expect. Yeah, it's going to go. OK, by the way, does does no one believe in helmets? Does no one believe in armor for her? Like at not, all? Not, like at not at all? when you look at not when you're that pretty. <laughs> yeah. Listen, she is way too pretty to, to be covered up for camera. Okay? This scene had such buildup. And, and and such pace and the pace kept escalating and I, I like everywhere online is well Jamie can't die wait 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 well but Daenerys can't die what what I don't understand yeah. what's happening in my brain and in heart head, at the moment it's there's a great meme that says season one Jamie Lannister needs to die season seven no please not Jamie great right. job writers good job good right. job good job it's the same thing. This, too. Everybody, like, these. This is the first time we've had two main characters in this kind of proximity, right? Again, though, no one learning the lesson of zigzagging for the love of God. Yes, can just we do one of these. Yeah. How do we not do know a button zigzagging? Hook, a button thing? hook right. Button hook but, right. Anyway, um, so I mean, let's talk about the dragon because we'll get. I mean, I was just happy to see the Dothraki, and I was like, yeah, Dothraki, and I was like, I wonder if they're going to bring. <laughs> Oh my god! And dragon. finally seeing the dragon just just I was I I I I was at a loss for words. I was jumping around. I was just yelling. I I probably woke up my my children. Don't advise doing that. What were your reactions when you finally see that we're having a dragon breathe fire on a bunch of people? I had I had to like like retract my jaw, like roll my tongue back. You know what I mean? Like I I like Jim Carrey from The Mask when he's I'm sitting scene. there like an idiot. I'm yeah. I'm just I'm speechless. I'm dumbfounded. I'm I'm watching it. Bully to Messant. <laughs> yeah, still. that's about right. Still. Yeah, it hasn't gone away. You should have sought medical attention. No, nah, I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait it out to the end of the se- season and then go. Walking around telling everybody those are pleats. <laughs> it's the pleats. It's, just, it's, the, it's the illusion. It's the illusion <laughs> on the pants. It's, it's like a magic eye. <laughs> okay, so the other thing I, I thought was interesting, too, was... Uh, so we can, we can agree that it was Braun that put... Jamie in the lake, right? I think, that no, I think it was Dickon. You think it was Dickon? Really? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Because Why I do you think it was Dickon? Because he introduced him? Um, that and Bronn seemed like he was pretty far away. Like He was a little preoccupied. You right. Know, I thought with, he was with, running to him after the whole no, crossbow I don't, I don't, on fire thing. No, I think he was bailing on his position because the crossbow just got set on fucking fire. Like He was trying to get away from the dragon's attention at that point. I don't, But I don't think... <clears throat> like that dragon covered a lot of ground as most dragons do right between setting the crossbow on fire and fi- and running into Jamie. There was a lot of ground there. The, there was a good image I saw on, on Reddit and it had a, how a normal lake works and it has a stick drawing with a small slope, you know, going down like every normal lake in the world. It was how Jamie Lannister's lake work. And then woof, a huge cliff just <laughs> drop off into nothing because he's got, Splash on the edge of the lake, and now he's sinking. And I thought two things: number one, oh my god, a whole lot of armor. But number two, huge golden hand. Like you are, you are down, dude. You're going to the bottom of this thing. Hope you brought some scuba gear. Um, I don't think this is the way Jamie goes out. I mean, I wouldn't leave it past him to figure out a way to kill him in a lake somehow. But I, I mean, how much longer does Jamie Lannister have on the clock? I think he makes it till the end of the series. Yeah, he has to. I mean, he dies killing Cersei. La- last episode that. type thing? Yeah, it has to be, right? I would hope so. The 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 premiere episode ended with Jamie Lannister, right? The things we sure. do for love, wasn't that the oh, end yeah, of the yeah, first yeah, episode? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Right. I mean, the very first episode ended on him. It I don't I don't see it. All right, so uh, this episode, again, like we said, this is the shortest episode of Game of Thrones we've had, but I think uh, was okay. With, I was okay with that because we finally got dragons uh, firing. This and, is like and, this is probably my like my top ten episodes. Yeah, absolutely. I, for for not only just action and great things happening, but good storytelling wow, happening. As so well. good and great acting performances out of everyone involved. So I, I was really. Really stoked about it. So, what do you guys? Is there any wild card theories or something that we we missed that uh, we need to bring up for for this episode? I think I think 
the Sansa Arya thing could be a problem. I do. Like, I don't know why I think it's going to be so divisive, but that's how I feel about it. I'm really interested to to see kind of how this is all going to tie back into what we learned about the first men and the the what was it the children of the forest or yeah children of the corn whatever it was yes uh, Mal- and, how it's gonna, and how it's going to tie into that storyline and the White Walkers. I, I'm really curious to see how that all gets tied in because the White Walkers are all chilling out till all the other plot lines develop. They um, really are. They're really just hanging out. Like I was just, I mean, just next, sitting on the bench. The next episode, which you have all watched by now, so congratulations for time paradox of recording this, uh, has a lot to deal with them going to uh, the the north and the wall. Right? They're they're going up to uh, East Watch. Uh, so I mean, we'll definitely see about that. But I'm really curious to learn more about just how all those stories are connected. And I think we're going to learn that through John and and Danny, and we're going to learn it. Uh, through through Bran, and I'm really curious to see how those those things. Cersei's tie a White Walker. There's your there's your crazy. <laughs> theory. No, she's just cold and heartless. It's she's, all she's the totally Night different, Queen. Totally different. Thing. She's just been able to hide it for uh, for all this time. There you go. Crazy theory. <laughs> all right. Well, that is that our is bad of shit. The, crazy, Craig. That's true. That is our coverage of the spoils of war, Game of Thrones, uh, season seven, episode four. I'm CJ Mellon, joined, of course, by Josh Burns and Brian Thornton, and always in spirit by Craig Newcomb. Thank you so much for listening, and we will see you guys next week. Mm-hmm.